What happens to a person when they die? Is it true that when you die, if you have lived a righteous life, you go to heaven? And is it true that if you live a wicked life, a sinful life, you go to hell? Does hell even exist right now? That is what we will talk about today. And I pray that you may focus and listen to God's word. Through the Holy Spirit, by the grace of God, we are going to understand death as the Bible teaches it, as the Word of God teaches it to us. Let us bow our heads and pray. Father, we thank you for life. Have mercy upon me and have mercy upon those who listen and those who are watching. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Death, not everyone. In fact, nobody likes to hear about this. Some don't even like to preach about death. In 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 2, David speaking to Solomon says, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. David said this before he was going to die. He knew that he was about to die. So he says, I go the way of all the earth, meaning that <laughs> we are all headed towards death, except for those who will be alive when Jesus comes. But if we die before Jesus comes, then death is not really a problem as long as you die in Christ. I hear people, whenever there are typhoons, people are so afraid of typhoons. People are afraid of dying because of an earthquake. People are afraid of dying because of a tsunami. A typhoon or an earthquake is not the worst thing that can happen to you. The worst thing that can happen to you is to face a typhoon without Christ or to face an earthquake without Christ. If you die because of an earthquake and if you have Christ, it is not a problem because you will rise again. And the worst crisis you can face is not a financial crisis, but it is to face a financial crisis without Jesus. Because if you have Jesus, then you are safe. Death. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10, the Bible says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. According to this verse, when you die, you no longer work. When you die, you no longer have knowledge or you no longer use your wisdom. So if you want to work, work now. If you want to get knowledge and wisdom, do that now. Because when you die, according to the Bible, you can no longer do those things. Death in the Bible is often referred to as a sleep. If you look at Acts chapter 7, verse 60, it says that when Stephen was being stoned, he prayed for those who were stoning him. And he asked God not to hold that, that against them. And the Bible says that he fell asleep. He passed away. And if you look at uh, the book of Kings in the Old Testament and Chronicles. And often when it talks about the kings, it mentions that they, sl they, they, f they slept with their fathers. Or they were buried um, beside their fathers and they slept. So the Bible talks about death, refers to death as a sleep. And we know that when you're asleep... You are unconscious. The next verse we'll look at is Isaiah 26, 14. The Bible says, they are dead, they shall not live. Meaning that when a person dies, they stop living. They are deceased, they shall not rise. Therefore, hast thou visited and destroyed them and made all their memory to perish. Psalms 146, verse 3, the Bible says, put not your trust in princess nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no hope. In other words, the only person in whom there is no help, sorry, the only person we should trust is God. The only person who we can put our confidence in and will not betray us, will not disappoint us, is God. Why? Verse 4, His breath, speaking about man, goeth forth. He returneth to his earth. In that very day, his thoughts perish. So when a person dies, they no longer think. And if they are not thinking, they are not living. 
The next verse, very clear, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7 says, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. This happens when a person dies. And the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. You remember in Genesis, when God created Adam and Eve, the Bible says he formed man out of dust and he breathed the breath of life into his nostrils and man became a living what? A living soul. Now according to Psalms and Ecclesiastes, when a person dies, the breath goes forth and returneth. The breath goes forth to God and the body returns to dust. So in creation, the breath of life plus the dust created a living soul, created life. This is the breath that God breathed into man's nostrils. So, then this means that when a person dies, at death, the inverse takes place. The dust of the ground minus the breath of life yields a dead person or dead soul without any consciousness. So when a person dies, they no longer think, according to the Bible, according to the word of God, they no longer live. I'll repeat this verse before we proceed. Ecclesiastes ch chapter 12, verse 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. The dust is the person, the flesh. And the spirit which God breathed into man's nostrils shall return unto God who gave it. Isaiah 25, verse 8, the Bible says, He will swallow up death, talking about Jesus Christ. This is a prophecy. In victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from of all faces, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from of all the earth, for the Lord has spoken it. This is why in the beginning of this message, I told you that death is no longer a problem. As long as you have Jesus Christ, as long as you have yielded your life to him, then death is not a problem. Now, if you go into the New Testament, in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 55, the Bible says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Now, David said, I go the way of all the earth. This is in 1 Kings uh, 2, 2. And Ecclesiastes says that we will all face death. Nobody's exempted from death unless you will be alive when Jesus comes. But the good news is that death no longer has power over those who accept Jesus Christ. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? When did this take place? When Jesus Christ came and when Jesus laid his life and resurrected, Jesus Christ defeated death. Jesus Christ has defeated any sin you think can keep you down. Because Jesus has risen, it is possible to overcome every temptation, every sin, every issue, and everything which you think can keep you from having a genuine relationship with him or from spending eternity with God. 1 Corinthians 15, 44. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in what? In victory. So through Jesus Christ, we are given a new chance. Through Jesus Christ, we become conquerors. And death is no longer fearful to any person who has Christ. Now, this topic is related with spiritualism. And you'll understand as we proceed. But I want to, we want to establish something as we proceed. In Genesis 3, 4, when the serpent came to Eve, the serpent said to Eve, you will not surely die. Now Eve had told the serpent that God had said we should not eat from this tree, for in the day we eat we shall surely die. So the serpent says, no, you will not surely die. This is Genesis 3, 4. And in Ezekiel 18, 20, the Bible says, the soul who sins shall what? Shall die. So the devil lied to Eve and told Eve that you can sin, you can disobey God, but you will not really die. 
Even if you disobey God, you will live. You will continue to live. This has been reversed to say the soul, even though it sins, shall what? Shall live eternally. This is what the devil was actually saying. In Ecclesiastes 9, verse 3, the Bible says, This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event, one event unto all, meaning we all take part in one thing, and this is it. Also, the heart of the sons of man is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they are alive. Hmm? And after that, they go to the dead. Meaning madness is in their hearts while they are alive. But when they die, they stop. Now if you look at verse 4, it says, For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. Meaning for as long as you are alive, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. Strong verse. Verse 5. For the living know that they shall die. When you are alive, you know that you will die. In other words, you know, you think. But the dead know not anything. The dead can no longer think. Neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. So while you're alive, think as much as you can. Use your imagination as much as you can. Because according to the Bible, according to the word of God, when you die, you stop thinking. Your memory is forgotten. And finally, verse 6, also their love and their what? Their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. So if you want to love, love as much as you want while you're still alive. And if you want to hate, hate as much while you're still alive and envy as much as you can. Because when you die, according to the Bible, according to the word of God, you no longer love, you no longer hate, you no longer envy, because the dead know nothing. Romans 8, 10 says, And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of what? Because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit... Of him that raised up Jesus. Why was Jesus raised up? Well, because he died. Jesus laid his life on a Friday. And he rested on the Sabbath. Resurrected on Sunday. But Jesus was dead. Now the Bible says that in verse um, 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that believeth in you. I want to share two things from you from this verse. First thing is that Jesus had died. And the Bible says that Jesus was raised. So when Jesus died, Jesus did not go anywhere. He did not go to heaven. Now, some believe that when you die and you live a righteous life, you go to heaven. Jesus lived a righteous life. But when he died, Jesus did not go to heaven. The Bible says that he was raised. He remained here on earth. And he was raised by God. I'll repeat this verse in verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. This is if the Holy Spirit dwells in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. You So death is not a problem if you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Those who die in Christ, those who live a righteous life, those who live a spirit-filled life, when they die, they simply sleep. And when Jesus comes one day, as he was resurrected, so shall ye be resurrected. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. Now listen to this. There's a reason why these words are in red. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. A question. If when we die, we go to heaven, who is Jesus coming to fetch? Who are these people? 
that are supposed to rise when he comes. When we die, we do not go there, but we sleep and we wait for that great day when Jesus Christ will come again and all will be resurrected. And this verse says that the dead in Christ will rise first. So when you die and you have lived a righteous life, you do not go to heaven. You wait down here for Jesus to come and resurrect you. The dead in Christ shall arise first, and they that shall arise first with Christ, they shall spend a millennium with Christ. And after that, that is when the wicked will be judged. So judgment is not for the righteous. Judgment is for the wicked. Judgment is for those who have not accepted Jesus Christ. And if you continue to read in verse, verse 17, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord forever. Verse 18, therefore, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Comfort one another with these words. Death, my brothers and sisters, should not be something we should be terrified of. If you have Christ, then you should not fear death. And if you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, I invite you not to accept Jesus because you want to escape hell, not to accept Jesus because you want blessings, but to accept Jesus because Jesus is actually seeking to have a genuine relationship with you. Jesus is seeking to establish a relationship. So we do not accept Jesus because we want to escape death, or we do not accept Jesus because we want to escape hell. We come to Christ because we want to have a relationship with him. Sin separated us from God. Jesus came to reunite us to God. And this is the purpose. This is the reason why I preach the gospel. Let us proceed. The abode of death. In the Old Testament... The Old Testament calls the place where people go as death, Sheol, in Hebrew, Sheol. Now, and the New Testament calls death Hades, Greek. In the scripture, Sheol most often simply means the grave. So when you read uh, Sheol in the Old Testament, it actually means grave. And when you read Hades, it means grave. It doesn't mean hell. The meaning of Hades is similar to that of Sheol. And the dead go into this place. According to Psalms uh, 89 verse 48, it says that the dead go into this place. It means that the dead go into the grave. So when you read Shaul or Hades, it is not talking about hell. Both the righteous and the wicked, Jacob said, Jacob said, I shall go down into what? Into the grave. Jacob said this, that when he dies, he will go down into the grave. He will not go up into heaven but he will go down into the grave. This all is actually related with spiritualism. I want you to watch a video, and after you have watched the video, I will share something with you before we close that will help you to better understand this topic. Now, as we saw in Genesis 3-4, the devil told Eve, you shall not surely what? Die. I want you to watch this video. How are so many of Hollywood's most famous actors and actresses able to be so amazingly effective and convincing in their performances? That guy was so electrifying that it came through the television. How is it that they can move us to laughter, tears, or anger at the drop of a hat? Are they truly gifted with natural talent, as many suggest? You see this and you just, you're dazzled by their talent. Do they possess a creative streak of genius that is unknown to most men? Or unknown to most men, are they in fact possessed? Is it possible that these actors and actresses are possessed by demonic spirits who have a specific agenda to fulfill? Oscar award-winning actor Denzel Washington told 60 Minutes exactly how he brings forth his best performances. Basically what I did was got on my knees and sort of communicated with the spirits 
And when I came out, I was in charge. Powerful scene. Powerful scene. It, it was... I couldn't have acted that. I couldn't have written that down and made a decision to play that. What, are you going to smoke that? Nope. You are. <laughs> Hell if I am. Yeah, yeah Jesus freak. <laughs> Jesus Freak. The one-woman entertainment empire known as Oprah has strong affiliations with the demonic realm. The most familiar face on television says, You can not only use your body and physical self. This is how I see acting. I ask my body to be the carrier for the spirits of those who have come before me in a way that is most meaningful to the character. Just become the vehicle for that character. Calling out for these entities to take her over so that she may become a sparkling puppet, Oprah admits of her work before the camera. I tried to empty myself and let the spirit inhabit me. With her global influence, her shows have become a smorgasbord for the New Age agenda. Is it wrong to believe that, or is there a problem in believing that when you die, you go to heaven, or that when a person dies, they live again? I, is it okay? What, is there a problem if you believe in that? Well, according to the Bible, it is very clear that when a person dies, they sleep. They are unconscious. They cannot love. They cannot hate. They no longer think. And they wait for Jesus to come or resurrect them. Now, the video you have watched, these are actresses. And they say that before they act, they empty themselves and they ask for spirits to inhabit them. Do you think that these spirits they ask for is the Holy Spirit? And... For uh, Denzel Washington, I believe, he said that he goes on his knees and he empties himself and he asks for the spirit to inhabit him. And then he gets up and he acts. Oprah says that she asks for spirits of those who have gone before her, meaning those who have died away, a spirit that is meaningful to that character. And she says that she just becomes a vehicle for that character. So meaning that Say, for example, she's going to play a role of someone who was addicted to drugs. What she does is she will communicate with the spirit and she will ask for, for someone who has already passed away that used to be addicted to drugs. And that spirit will feel her and then she will act. So what they are saying is that they ask for the spirits of those who have passed away to help them in acting and in performing and this is what they do in Hollywood but the Bible teaches that when a person dies they they don't live anymore they don't speak they don't think they don't act so then if they say they ask for spirits of those who have died to come then is it really those people well it's clear from the Bible that it's not the people that have passed away so it has to be someone else or it has to be something else that is appearing to them. Leviticus 19 verse 31. The Bible says, Regard not them that have what? Familiar spirits. Neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. God knew that people would be seeking uh, familiar spirits or wizards. So God says, Do not seek them. Another verse is Leviticus 26. And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits and after wizards to go whoring with them I will even set my face against that soul and will cut off them from among the people another verse is found in Deuteronomy 8 11 or a, ch a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer what is a necromancer or who is a necromancer a necromancer is someone who people go to and they ask them to speak, let's say, to a dead relative. And he does some things and someone who looks like your dead relative, sounds like your dead relative and knows things that only your dead relative will know can say. And so necromancy is believing in uh, or divination is believing in life after death. 
That when a person dies, they still live and you can actually call them to come. This is what necromancer do. They communicate with the dead. That's what they, they, they profess to do. If you look at uh, 1 Samuel 28 verse 3, the Bible says, Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had lamented him and buried him. They buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. And Saul had put away those that had what? Familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. When Samuel had died, Saul had chased away all those that had familiar spirits. And he chased away all the wizards that were in Israel. The reason why he had done this, well, he should have done this before. But anyways, he did it and it is good. It is because the devil uses them. To deceive his people but a strange thing happens he later on in his life goes to seek a familiar spirit second kings 21 verse 6 and he made his two sons pass through the fire and observed times and used enchantments and dealt with what familiar spirits now this is not talking about Saul. this is talking about another king who had abandoned God's commandments and was seeking wizards and familiar spirits. He wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. So according to the Bible, when we seek familiar spirits, when we seek wizards, and in, when we do enchantment, it does not please God. And God warns us to flee from these things. 2 Kings 23, 24, Moreover, the workers with familiar spirits and the wizards and the images and the idols and all the abominations that were spied in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem did Josiah put what away and that he might that he might perform the words of the law which were written in the book that Hilkiah the priest found in the house of the Lord. There was a time in Israel that the people had abandoned God's commandment. They had abandoned God's law. And Josiah had found the book of the law. And in the book of the law, he discovered that the Israelites were to be as far as possible from familiar spirits, from wizards, and even from worshiping idols. So when he discovers this, he destroys all the idols and he chases away all those who had familiar spirits and all the wizards. Isaiah 8, 19 says, And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits. Meaning, if anyone tells you, Seek a familiar spirit, or go to see a wizard, to, see, to, to talk to one of your dead relatives, or to anyone that has passed away. The Bible says, And unto wizards that peep, and that mutter, Should not a people seek unto their God, for the living to the dead so the bible does not encourage or support us to seek familiar spirits or that we can talk to the dead in fact god says that we ought not to seek familiar spirits last verse is found in isaiah 19 verse 3 it says and the spirit of egypt shall fall where shall fall in the midst thereof and oh boy and they shall seek the idols and the charmers and to them that have familiar spirits and to the wizards in acts chapter 16 verse 16 it says that and it came to pass as we went to prayer a certain dumb cell possessed with the spirit of divination met us with which brought her masters much gain by sooth, sooth saying. Divination is believing in life after death. Now this girl had a spirit of divination. According to verse 17 it says, And same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. 
they were being followed by a girl that had the spirit of divination. In other words, she was filled with a demon that used to use her for divination. What would happen is people would go to her and they would ask her to speak to their dead relatives. And she would call a spirit that in, would impersonate the person whom they wanted to see and they would talk to that spirit. And the Bible says that this girl followed Paul and Timothy and Silas and that Paul rebuked the spirit from her and the spirit left her. So it is clear from the Bible that we are not supposed to speak to the dead. In fact, when we claim to be speaking to them, it's not actually people, but it is demons who impersonate those dead relatives or anyone who has passed away. Ellen White says, many will be confronted by the spirits of devils personating beloved relatives or friends and declaring the most dangerous heresies. These visitants will appear to our tenderest sympathies and will work miracles to sustain their pretensions. We must be prepared to withstand them with the Bible truth that the dead know not anything. Where did she get that from? From Ecclesiastes. And they, and that they who appear, and they who thus appear the spirits of devils. Luke chapter 16, verse 19 to 31. In there you find a story of a rich man, Lazarus, of the poor man, Lazarus, and the rich king. And it say, goes on to say that the king died and he went to hell. And that Lazarus died and he was taken and he was in the bosom of Abraham. You know, he was taken to heaven. And it goes on to say that the rich man from hell, he saw, uh, he was speaking to Abraham and said, send Lazarus that he may just dip here and cool this place for me. And so that he was in hell talking to Abraham. Now many say that, uh, they take that literally, that when a person dies, they really do go to hell if they have lived a wicked life. And the poor man Lazarus, well, he lived a righteous life, so he went to heaven. If that is true, then that would mean that when a person died, they can talk to those who are alive. Because it goes on to say that uh, the, the rich man was talking to Abraham from hell, and even Abraham was talking to him from heaven. If this is true, then we should be able to talk to Moses. Moses is in heaven. We should be able to talk to Elijah. We should be able to talk to Elisha. So that is not literal. It is a parable it, 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 that Jesus was teaching. It is not literal. So when a person dies, if they have lived a righteous life, they do not go to heaven, but they sleep and they await the judgment. And if you have lived a wicked life, then you wait for the judgment. So when a person dies, they sleep and they do not go to heaven or they do not live in any other place. Some even believe that their spirit goes into cows or into animals and they live. I pray that you have learned something today. And I pray that you will not just take this message and put it aside, but that you will continue to study the word of God and to seek truly what the word of God teaches about this topic. And I pray that you may come to Christ, not to escape death, not to escape hell, but to come to Christ because you want to have a relationship with him, because you want to know him. As I have said in the beginning of this message, sin separated us from God. Once we were in the presence of God, we enjoyed his presence, we communed with him, but sin separated us from God and Jesus is trying to lead us. Jesus is leading us back to God. And Jesus longs to do that for you today. I would like to invite you to bow your heads as we pray. Father, thank you for life. Thank you for the Bible. And thank you for the truth. May you give us strength to apply your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.